Welcome to part two of this two-parter on making the level. So we're not going to go through and make this huge long input file by typing in a bunch of numbers. What we're going to do is we're going to make a program to streamline that process. So it'll start out with all the basic stuff. We will load the bitmaps that we will use for the um, the wall, basically. And the background that we will be using. So we'll open up a window, um, call it Level Maker. Um, this will be a graphics window, no, no fill, and no scroll bar as number one. Now we're going to use the mouse for this one. Um, and to use the mouse, just like character input, when we sense the mouse moving, we go to a certain um, branch. So print number one, when mouse move, go to move. Um, also, we need to watch for when people click. So when left button down, go to click. And before I forget, um, trap, close, quit. Um, now once again, um, when you open up a, a a window that requires input from either the keyboard or the mouse, you got to make sure that the um, the focus is on that window. So you use the word set focus. I'm going to declare a few arrays and variables. Um, we'll have uh, an array for the the block number name. Um, there shouldn't be more than like a thousand of them. Um, we might get around to... Uh, maybe not. Um, there will be a location for each blocks. Block X, block Y, and um, there will be a variable for the block count, just to keep track of how many. And uh, that'll be, initially, it'll be equal to zero. Um, another, another variable that I had mentioned before is that the unit is equal to 32 pixels. That way we can work with nice whole numbers Now, let's add the sprite for the block. Print number one. Add sprite block and use the BMP block. And of course, the background. Background BG. And let's draw those sprites. Now, let's open up a file dialog, and we'll right off the bat save this file. So to do that, um, 
do save as and then in parentheses not parentheses quotes do star dot I do dat um, data file it's pretty common uh, I don't know if it matters though but it might and give it a file name or ask for a file name and then we can open that file name for output as I don't know, number two. So we're making an output file that'll save all the information on where we place these blocks. And so now we'll wait for input. So when the mouse moves, what are we going to do? Well, uh, issue this command, scan. Uh, I don't remember what that does, but I'm just in the habit of using it. Um, print number one sprite xy block and then where are we going to put it? Well there are some built-in variables here mouse x and mouse y. These variables are intrinsic to just basic and I don't know if I used that word right but they are built into just basic and they hold the xy coordinate of where your cursor is at and um, so that way we can graphically see where we're putting these these blocks um, and so to actually see that implemented you're gonna have to put draw sprites otherwise it's not actually doing anything so then just wait for more input um, what happens when you click Well, the block count goes up because we're setting a block down. So at this point, if it gets to this point in the program, block count equals one the first time around. All right, so with that in mind, um, whoops, we shall give this sprite a name. Um, so block of block count, basically the nth block is equal to block plus string of block count and if you remember this is called string concatenation or is it concatenation I don't know I just read things anyway um, so this is becoming the first time around this becomes block one because block count equals one the next time around it'll be block two all right, so let's add that sprite. I'll add sprite name, 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 and sprite what? Block, block count. Where are we adding it? Um, here is where things get a little bit tricky. Um, oh yeah, we don't do that yet. I made this mistake last video, didn't I? Um, that's on the next one. Uh, we use that bitmap image. All right, and then what happens is we do print number one sprite xy. And let's talk about this for a second. I want to do a snap to grid, so I don't want to be able to place blocks where the heck ever. I want to have it align to this 32 unit grid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the values of block x, block count. I want this to be um, an integer of mouse x divided by unit times unit. What on earth did I just do? Well, mouse x divided by unit will give me a decimal. An integer will ch chop off that, that decimal and then it, we multiply it back by unit to give it the same basic value, just, just snapped to I don't know. It's hard to explain. It made sense in my head and it works, but I don't know how to explain it. Anyway, 
do the same thing for block Y, I mean block Y, uh, only using the mouse Y variable. And now we do sprite XY. Oh, I see an error. It's going to ask me which sprite I'm talking about. Oops. All right, this looks right. All right, what comes next? Well, um, I guess we would do print draw sprites and wait for more input. It's as simple as that. Now what happens when we quit? Quit, just close number one. Um, hang on. When we quit, we actually have to print these things the output file. I almost forgot that. So we print number two. The first thing we want to print to it is the block count so that when we read this input file, we know how many um, sets to actually read. And then we'll go for i equals one to block count. Print number two two block x i divided by unit oops and then a comma and some spaces and then the y variable Okay, at this point we have all the data we need, so we can close number one and we can close number two and end the program. Now, I think I have everything I need. I'm going to save it and I'm going to try running it. So we have one error here, spread xy block block count block x block y syntax error? Where's the syntax error? Anybody see the syntax error? Because I don't. Oh, found it. Alright, let's try that again. Okay, so we have the option to save as what am I going to save it as? We'll just call it terrain test dot net. See how streamlined this is? I love this. This is awesome. Look at this. This is awesome. I can place blocks wherever I want and see how it jumps to grid and they're all aligned nicely. And this is so great. Alright, so that's my terrain. Uh, whoops. Out of range 11 block C. Did I make an oops? I did. Alright, that was supposed to be block X. Let's try this again. I'm going to save it as the same thing. Ding 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 Ding, 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 ding. Does that look kind of creepy to you? All right. Now let's assume that it worked. Let's go to uh, where is this saved at? Excuse me one moment while I dig through all my stuff. Just basic game tutorial. Ah, here it is. So as you can see. Here is my data. 
This is the block count, and these are the coordinate points. Let's try something. Let's open up my code. I think I got to the point where I can load something, didn't I? Let's, oh no, let's go down here. Ah, see I have it hard-coded. Let's change this to terrain test, the one I just had the program make. Well, I don't know what's going on. That's clearly not the way I had it. <laughs> oh, you know what? My code reads my code reads um the main character spawn point and some stuff that I don't want it to read quite yet. So I'm going to comment these lines out until it gets to block count. There. There, that's what I made. Okay. So that's just all I wanted to do for this video. I mean, you can do so much, you can make life so easy for yourself if you really want to. So that's that's just what this video was for. Now you can make, make le levels with ease and uh, make hundreds of them in one evening if you want. So have fun with that and stay tuned for the next video.